Dr. Chatu, I think you need to uh, check your microphone. Oh, yes. sorry about that. Hello, it's everyone, up. and welcome to the. Uh, thank you very much, Tushara, for reminding me. Uh, so, yeah, welcome to the group discussion room on uh, methodology. Uh, I think I need to first share the screen to show the questions that we are uh, about to discuss. Uh, let me just do it now. Bear with me one second, please. Okay, I hope you all can see my screen now. Yes, Dr. Chatu, we can see the screen. Very good. So yeah, welcome again uh, to this uh, breakout room on, group, um, uh, on methodology. Uh, let me first introduce myself. Uh, I'm Chaturangani Jayapuri. I'm a researcher attached to Global Disaster Resilience Center, University of Huddersfield, UK. Uh, in this session, I'll be acting as the facilitator. Uh, um, as Nuance, uh, Dr. Nuan said, actually, I'm just facilitating uh, the, uh, the, the stage is yours. You, are, you need to discuss, and I'll be just facilitating the event. And uh, in this session, our rapporteur is Mr. Ganesh. Mr. Ganesh, you can introduce yourself. Thank you, Dr. Shato. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Ganesha. I'm here to assist Dr. Chato in taking notes. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Ganesh. So, yeah. Um, so, we have um, around uh, half an hour. Uh, so, within this half an hour, we will take first 25 minutes to discuss uh, these potential discussion points. Obviously, these points are just uh, just a guidance or like a suggestion. Uh, so you can always put uh, whatever the questions you have in mind regarding methodology, and we can uh, discuss on these uh, on these matters. And we have around 30 minutes. Uh, so within these 30 minutes, uh, let's take first 25 minutes to discuss these things. And Mr. Ganesh will take notes on them. And within uh, final five minutes, uh, let's um, Mr. Ganesh can present those summary points and we all can agree with the, uh, discuss whether we agree on those points and then we can forward those points to the main plenary. So uh, I, will, um, I was first thinking uh, to give everyone a time to introduce themselves, but I don't think now we have time because we don't have one hour. So what we, uh, what, uh, what the best would be is I will uh, put forward the question. And before answering, you can give a, a brief introduction, your name and the institution you are attached to, and then uh, you can take the discussion from there. So the first question uh, I would like to put to my group is why method, when, you be, when we are writing an article or a manuscript, why do you think that this methodology section is so important that we need to consider and we need to structure them properly and we need to give them the message to the reader? Why do you think why the methodology is so important in a manuscript? So the stage is yours. As you think, why? Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I'll yes. start the discussion here. So I'm, I'm, I'm Ezri I'm from Tisa University. Assalamualaikum semuanya. Uh, in my view, methodology is important because it's verified the validity 
uh, and credibility of the discussion and result that you're presenting in your paper. I think that's the, the very first point. Thank and, you very yeah. much. Yes. Yeah, yeah, go on, please. No, that's that's one point, and I, I invite other 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 uh, uh, participants to uh, share their view as well. Thank you very much, Esther. That's a very valid point. Uh, anybody else would like to add uh, a point on it? Yes, uh, I I know uh, I can hear you have raised uh, your hand. Please. Yeah. Hi, uh, everyone. I am Ainul Maria. Assalamualaikum. I'm from Merchubwana University in Jakarta. Right now, I'm continuing my study in Coventry University. Um, I think methodology is important. So to let others know, like the step you take or you took, so everyone could replicate to see whether they have the same result or different. Yeah, I think that's all. Thanks. Yeah, here we have got another valid point. Thank you, Ainul. And Tushara, yours, please. Yeah, I can see your hand. Thank you, Dr. Chato. Uh, I'm Tushara Kamal Ratna. I'm a PhD student uh, at the Global Disaster Resilience Center, University of Huddersfield. So uh, in my view, actually, uh, actually, the methodology gives you kind of a scientific frame to, you know, uh, uh, show that how you um, of course, uh, develop your entire research program within a concise uh, the framework. Uh, it gives you kind of a strong um, validity uh, of your research. And on the other hand, so when it comes to the, um, uh, the understanding or the, 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 the broad understanding of the, uh, the uh, uh, research philosophy, so that uh, that comes with the particular chain, I mean, uh, epistemological idea, and then uh, actually it is how you, uh, how you got, uh, what is the knowledge that you're expecting, and when it comes to the methodology, it gives you how you go into, you know, uh, get the particular knowledge. So it has a kind of a chain relationship uh, that, uh, that gives you a um, very uh, kind of a good scientific basis, actually. Yeah, that's my idea, Chakra. Thank you, Tushar. I think we are getting very valuable points here. I'm sure Mr. Ganesh is noting them down. Yeah, Malit, you can uh, come in. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Chatu. So I'm Malit Seniratna, a postgraduate researcher attached to the Global Disaster Resilience Center. So I think my point is uh, adding over to what Tushar mentioned. It's basically about a scientific process. As, and also what I would like to say is it's about the systematic method, uh, about our approach to resolve the problem that we are that we have identified in the, like basically in the literature review section. So uh, once we have identified the question, how we are approaching it through a systematic method will be defined, also defined in the methodology section, uh, as I would say this. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mali. Uh, anybody else would like to put a add something on it? Uh, um, yeah, I think Fritz, if I pronounce your name, yeah, please. Yep. Thank you, thank you for uh, the opportunity. My name is Fritz Yombing. I'm from Calvin Institute of Technology in Jakarta. We are a new institute. So I think uh, the methodology is important because uh, the results that we get from the methodology have some justification uh, later on when we try to link between the finding and then the research question that we pose in the earlier part of our paper. Whether it's actually good results or not good, then we can talk about it in the discussion section. I think that's somewhat like a justification of what we do. I think like that. That's a very good point. Thank you, uh, Fritz. Actually, now I can see a, a very good connection um, with the answers as well. As Malit suggested, uh, the methodology section gives the approach how we are going to explore the research problem or research gap which you have introduced at the at the earlier section of the uh, manuscript. So you will give your background and then research gap and then research problem and how you are going to address this research gap will be introduced 
from the methodology. And then as Tushara and Esri uh, pointed out, and then uh, Fritz pointed out, uh, it gives the credibility to your findings. Okay, you have the methodology is crucial in any branch of scholarship because an unreliable method produce unreliable results. So if you have used a reliable method, it gives the credibility and reliability of your results. So in that sense, methodology uh, section is really important to discuss, to show uh, the credibility of your findings. Uh, from the reader's perspective also, reader would needs to know how the data was obtained because the method you choose affects the results. So that is uh, one uh, main reason. And apart from that, I would like to also add uh, another point to this. The methodology section also important. It's because the study could be replicated by the other researchers in the field of your study. Let's say, as an example, I'm using grounded theory method. Uh, so in the planning and designing field, grounded theory method is not that popular. So if I have used it, if I can explain in my manuscript, it will be a good, um, good example for others who would like to replicate and use the grounded theory in their method. So in that sense also, uh, the methodology section is really important to the reader to know uh, to replicate that in their study. I think uh, Fitz also um, uh, touched that uh, point uh, somehow, yeah. So uh, Ganesh, to you, uh, there are two uh, things in our group discussed. The methodology section is important. Uh, it's because it provides essential information that allows the reader to judge the validity of the findings. That's one reason. And the second reason is uh, like it gives the approach how you are going to explore your research problem and the research gap. Uh, that's the second point I would say, yeah. Uh, then the third point is uh, the study could be replicated by other researchers if you explain the methodology uh, properly. So you have we have uh, three answers to the first question. Uh, I hope you all agree. If you want to add something, you are always welcome to it. Uh, as uh, uh, looking at the time, I will jump into the uh, next uh, question. Um, as you think, which tends uh, to be used in writing methodology? Is it simple uh, present tense, past tense, or future tense, as you think? Which tends to be used when, we are, when you're writing the methodology? Past tense, I think. Past tense, I know. If I, yeah, if I hear you, yeah. Uh, why do you think it's past tense? Because you've done that and then you need to report in the past form, I think. Yes, I think uh, that's uh, that, uh, that's uh, the concise answer for that. Uh, to describe your methodology and report, um, report your results, at the time you are writing the article, you have already completed your studies. So it's always best to use the past tense, unless and until, uh, let's say you are writing the article based on the literature and you are going to do another study based on that. So you will be a little bit explaining the future studies as well in that case, uh, the methodology in the future study. In that case, you can use future tense, but almost you are using the uh, past tense. Uh, is everyone um, agree with that? Any point to add, add to it? No? Uh, so apart from the tense, uh, which choice of appropriate voice uh, should be used? It's not in the in writing here letter. It's it's just came into my mind. Which uh, choice of voice uh, should we use? Is it active uh, sense or passive voice? Active voice or passive voice should be used. Hi, this is Lisa. Uh, uh, for me, I would, I would think that I, I use active voice because I'm anthropologist by by training. So uh, I used to say like I, I interview blah 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 inter uh, respondent and so on. Right, Risa. Yeah, thank you very much. So uh, uh, so you can understand it may be depending on the field of study as well. Uh, some uh, writers um, like to use active voice, and some writers. Um, I'm from social science, uh, science and planning background, and I I would like to normally use passive voice uh, because uh, when we are describing the methodology, I would like to give the emphasis on the method I use or the actions I uh, use. 
are used rather than the person who carried out. So in that case, I would like to use passive voice. Uh, yeah, Riza would like to use active voice. Any any inputs on that? Uh, any would anybody would like to add anything on it? Yeah, I think we can go to the uh, third question. So how how to introduce the methods that were used? Like how are we going to uh, uh, start writing the methodology section? What is the approach are we going to use? Uh, what's the best approach maybe, as you think? I would probably start with the kind of data that we use and how we uh, collect and how we analyze the data. I think that's some of the point. Thank you, Esri. Anybody, anybody would like to add on it? Right, um, in, uh, yeah. Anybody? Yeah, I think I will, I will start with this is uh, the, the, my research is uh, using the qualitative or quantitative approach or a mix of, uh, you know, mixed method approach. Yeah, I also agree with that because uh, rather than jumping into the data collection or analysis, it's good if we can in the methodology section, if we can uh, start introducing the overall approach to the research design, how the research problem was addressed uh, when you're addressing are you, um, whether you used qualitative data, quantitative data, so the research approach on it, overall research design maybe, uh, start introducing, indicate how the approach your methods. Uh, so your methodology section of your paper should make a clear clear the reason why you choose the particular method or procedure. So given that background and then uh, detailing what are the approaches and methods and analysis would be a, a good approach. Uh, any, anybody, anybody else uh, would like to add on it or shall we go to the fourth point? We have another 20 minutes. So yeah, I will jump into the uh, fourth one. How to link the analysis and techniques used at which part of the methodology should we uh, link these analysis and techniques used. I think um, S3 uh, started discussing on it, uh, the techniques and analysis. Can I add a little bit something? <laughs> Yeah, sure. uh, I I think I can use like some uh, flow chart like that. And then in that flow chart, I put some little information on what we do until we uh, get into the very last step where we get the results. So some people probably used to you know read the uh, steps list and follow that easily, but maybe from uh, the other uh, field of research they used to read the whole narrative so I think it depends but in my case I usually put the flow chart that's very good yeah like that uh, you always when we are writing this uh, we need to think from the reader's perspective how easy for them to understand if you have used a really complicated method uh, how how you can simply explain it to the uh, reader. Uh, that thing really we need to focus when linking the analysis and techniques we use. Yes, Tushara, stage is yours. Uh, Dr. Chatu, I also used to start uh, with um, uh, kind of, a, you know, the broader frame again, like uh, research design and the approach basically. And uh, and probably uh, it will be determined by the, the the nature of the data that you uh, want to uh, you know uh, gather in your research, and then of course uh, the the instrument and analysis techniques also um, uh, it's depend on the, the 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 sort of you know the nature of the data that you uh, use in your research. So probably I used to you know uh, you know basically um, discuss the nature of the data and the approach and the design, and then uh, actually, uh, you know, go with the instrument and uh, other analysis techniques. 
That's a very good point. Yes, Tushar. That's a that's a very uh, sequential way that the 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 reader can easily understand, linking with the uh, previous point that I mentioned. So yeah, uh, starting with the research approach and how you answer the problem, and then uh, going to detail about the methods, uh, about the data collection. Uh, and techniques you used, and then the, how you carried out the analysis, explaining that um, uh, sequential process would be a good approach. Anybody would like to add any point before uh, going to sampling? I hope not. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, I think it's all clear. Oh, do you have any questions? Anybody got any questions uh, based on the things that we discussed so far? I hope not. So uh, let's go to sampling. Why do you think sa why do you think uh, sampling is really important to discuss in the methodology section? Uh, why sampling is important? Do we really need to provide a rationale of, uh, for the sampling procedure? Uh, yeah, I have some few on sampling. <clears throat> First, it's, it's again, very the uh, validity of the result. And also it, uh, relate, it is related to the generalizability of the findings. That's, yeah. that's a, yeah. Thank you, Resri. Yeah, that's a very valid point. That's actually main uh, point about um, sampling. Uh, for instance, if you propose to conduct an interview, how do you intend to select the sample proportion? Based on that, um, whether your sample is a good uh, like uh, uh, representation of the population, that, that gives the uh, credibility and the validity to your findings. And as, as Esri very correctly pointed out, uh, it gives how, how to what extent uh, generalizable your findings to the, uh, to the population or to the uh, real world would be, uh, would be determined uh, from your sampling procedure. So it's very important to mention the sampling procedure in your methodology section. Uh, anybody would like to add any point on it? I think we are having another 10 minutes, uh, 10 and yeah, 14 minutes. Oh yeah, yeah, please, Mali. Yes, doctor. So uh, also again, when it comes to sampling, that is where we identify the, like the minimum unit that we observe uh, when, it, when it comes to the analysis. So with the sampling, we get to identify where we are actually observing or doing the analysis uh, in terms of our data collection. I would suggest that, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Malik. Yeah, that's again a uh, very uh, like uh, valid point, like uh, connecting with the uh, what we have discussed already. So yeah, sampling is important to mention in that sense. Uh, so uh, uh, moving on, yeah, Tushar, please. Uh, Dr. Chato, so um, I just need to, you know, I mean, this may be kind of a debatable uh, in the research method. But uh, spe uh, specifically, when it comes to the ethnography and uh, anthropology, uh, I mean, the RISA also is there from the anthropology. So basically, um, we don't even use the, the, the term called the sampling. Instead, we uh, much go with the uh, selection of the respondents. But maybe it's, uh, of course, the sampling, uh, but uh, it's uh, basically due to um, uh, kind of a contradiction between the, the survey method uh, going with the sampling and so when it comes to the more qualitative so we use the the selection of the respondent based on the criteria and because we uh, basically think that um, uh, in which group that we can get more um, uh, experience or the, the 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 particular say for example uh, in disaster risk reduction, so we more focus on the kind of a group of people who are having the experience. So that's how we pick them. So th therefore, we cannot sometimes go with the kind of a scientific sampling, uh, which uh, uh, broadly used in the surveys and all other kind of, a, you know, scientific research. That's a kind of adding, Dr. Chatu. That's, uh, yeah, thank you very much, Tuzar. That's 
that's a very good aspect that we can discuss within the sam uh, relating to the sampling because if the, if uh, depending on the problem research problem that you are uh, that you are going to explore if that uh, towards the, uh, within this research problem if the population size is small let's say let's say as tushar mentioned uh, who have experienced this particular disaster may be limited so finding that limited group itself is a sampling i would say so in that case uh, we are not doing any sampling anyway we are going to select the whole respondents who have experienced the particular research problem or the uh, research uh, area uh, am i correct to say like that tushar have i put it correctly yes dr chatu yeah it is of course yeah very good thank you very much for praising that aspect of it yeah of course when it say sampling it's not only the sampling in some research it may be the uh, respondent itself who have experienced or explored that particular uh, the field that you are going to explore uh, yeah anybody have praise hands no so how to establish the methodological connection i think we have already discussed in it in a step by step process step 1 would be when we are doing this methodological collection connection our uh, group uh, members mentioned uh, the first step would be explaining your methodological approach at the beginning and then describe your method of data collection and selection of a sampling or the group of study and then describe your method of analysis the third step and then the fourth step would be uh, i would like to uh, add this uh, the limitations of your research so in that sense uh, describing about the a uh, fourth step we can move it to the uh, we can move our discussion to the seventh point limitations of the research do you really think that we need to discuss the limitations of the research within your methodology will it give the credibility to your findings how do you think i i think uh, for uh, for definition and the subject matter so the research is more focus and facility discussion so that the research objective will be achieved i think that <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, I think I think if I'm clear with the point what you have raised, uh, you mentioned like uh, we need to connect it with the objectives. Am I right to say that? Uh, oh, sorry, it wasn't that clear to me. Second here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so why? Uh, yeah. Thank you very much for that input. Uh, so. Uh, the limitations of the study when you are carrying out your research the methodology do you think the methodology should should discuss the problems that were anticipated um within the research what do you think uh, do you really think we need to discuss the limitations yes to share sorry dr chatu if i'm over talking <laughs> uh, no, no, of course no, the limitations is of course really essential uh, because uh, limitations are kind of a, um, uh, things that you cannot sometimes avoid uh, uh, in any uh, circumstances so the the uh, it is really uh, important that you mention your limitations because it gives you kind of a validity the level of the validity in your analysis now for example so i have some experience when we uh, uh, do some uh, research with the prison uh, inside the prisons and uh, we are not allowed to talk with the prisoners uh, uh, freely uh, always uh, kind of you know the supervisors and the jailers and uh, surrounding us so then we cannot exactly get the, the real idea uh, of the the prisoners about their experience and the, the kind of uh, a uh, uh, kind of a rehabilitation method that they experience so if i uh, do not uh, mention that in the limitations so somebody can questions that the validity of my analysis right whether you grab the the, the real experience of the prisoners uh, with the very kind of a free environment so therefore i mean the best thing that you can uh, you know mention the limitations in your research is it gives you more 
or kind of a uh, idea of the the nature or the level of your validity uh, which uh, uh, you know uh, enhances your internal validity in your research so that's really uh, important actually thank you Chatur. thank you thank you very much sir i think that's a very valid point and i totally 100% agree with you because sometimes some researchers think that okay by giving these limitations it can decrease your credibility of your findings but it, it's not as tushara very correctly mentioned it gives the it gives the credibility and to your findings more because the methodology should discuss the problem uh, the problems that were anticipated and also you can also discuss the steps that you have taken to prevent uh, from occurring that uh, particular um, problem sometimes and in in in, Tush in tushara's example of course that's important to mention because it gives the extent that we can use these findings to uh, generalize the prisoner's view or something like that. So uh, it's really important for any problem that did arise, you must describe the way in which you have already uh, that impacted your findings. Uh, so this problem blindness, uh, we call it, that's a common mistake that some researchers do, that they hide the limitations of your research from the methodology section uh, in a way that, um, uh, to promote your article or um, pro promote your study it's a very good and strengthful study but it's not that like that we call it the problem blindness you have to mention those problems and the way you have minimized that uh, problem arising is an important point when you are discussing the uh, limitations and as we are uh, we are we have only five minutes uh, to go back to the, uh, before going back to the main plenary, I will put the last question that we have. Um, this is a question for all of you and uh, please uh, put whatever the, uh, uh, the areas that you struggle, uh, areas where the most researchers struggle, uh, potential solutions for that when you are writing the methodology. What do you think? What are the areas that you struggle when you are writing your methodological uh, say methodology section in the manuscript. The last question. Any, any have um, you don't really um, maybe you haven't struggled any way. It's easy for you to write the methodology section. How do you think? Hello, maybe I have one question yeah. that um, related to the IRB. Like I, I had like on a, like a, in the past, I do I did research, but I do not have like an IRB. So I'm wondering if it is going to be a problem for a publication because some international journal asked for that. I mean, how, how, how it, will it affect oh. my, Chance for publication. Thanks. IROB, did you? Uh, what, what's that? I know. I didn't get it. What? What? Well, what I you don't, didn't don't have? have? I don't have like ethics, like like a certificate. Ethical approval. Um, you mean? Yeah, ethical approval. Yeah. That's that's very important question, I know. And thank you very much for raising this point. I think if you are submitting it to a very high impact journal. Uh, the 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 researchers the, the the publishers are very much now thorough with these ethical uh, matters so they are sometimes seeking for this ethical approval and when you are submitting the article there's a separate section that you have obtained the, if your research is involved with human participant um, or the, the the live animal participants like that you have the ethical approval something like that that closes there I think if you are um, trying to publish your research in a very high impacted journal and international journal, uh, I think it will be a problem. Uh, I'm sorry to say that it's, it's the direct answer because the ethical approval should be there uh, for any research who is involved with the uh, participant. Let's say if you have done a research, a lab based research, uh, sometimes um, the ethical approval may not need it, depending on the on the on the type of participants or the depending on the field you have selected. 
uh, I think you don't need. Uh, I'm not sure what is your field, but of course, in our case, if you have involved with any human participant, uh, we have to uh, get the uh, prior ethical approval on it. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure our Yeah, yeah, please. Sorry. Uh, Okay, um, at the time I asked my supervisor, do I have like any need to have like an application for ethical approval? But at the time in my university, they do not have such kind of things. So instead of that uh, ethical approval from university, I get a letter from Indonesian government, like uh, from, because my research is about um, psychological impact of uh, tsunami and uh, conflict in Aceh. So uh, I got the letter from, uh, because it was in a high school from the ministry of, not ministry, the, the district ministry of education in Aceh. So is it enough to replace like ethical approval or I, it, it won't, it wouldn't. So yeah, what do you think? Yeah, so the, if I explain the normal procedure, if uh, it, because it's a matter about the uh, psychological impact of tsunami, it's a very much sensitive matter. So the normal process would be before going to collect data or before kind of, uh, what the guidance says, before even contacting the participant, you need to uh, get the ethical approval uh, uh, prior to that. But in your case, if you have taken steps and if the ministry uh, is issuing this letter, it can give the credibility to your uh, to your uh, to your study that the way you have handled sometimes these sensitive matters, uh, mentioning that uh, would be a good example. Estri, I think you 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 can give some inputs um, because uh, you are more familiar with the Indonesian context. Can we use this letter uh, as a as a uh, uh, replacing the ethical approval? What do you think, Estri? Oh yeah, I think the, we we need to see in my in my point of view we need to see ethical approval from different perspective. First, from the academic institution perspective, then the ethical approval is a must. Either it is an ethical approval form, which needs to go through a series of say a check, or as simple as ethical release, where you basically just approve that there's no further. Uh, 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 check or scrutinize uh, with regard to your data collection. That's from the academic institution point of view. But when it comes to publications, I believe that a different journal uh, will have different views whether they require ethical approval uh, uh, for their publications. But I th and I think this is really related to the sensitivity of the information, sensitivity of data. For example, I don't think that if you're I don't think, and I, I don't see uh, if you're publishing, say, about construction management and you are inter interviewing, uh, uh, say, practitioners, construction managers, and you do interview and data so questionnaire, for example, I don't think that journal publications will require uh, uh, article approval for, for your, uh, uh, for your uh, publications in that sense. I might be wrong, but that's what I think because you can see how ethical is shown in how the data is being presented. If there's no name, if there's no uh, 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 personal characteristics identified in the paper, then you can see that this is ethical has been maintained from the publisher point of view. But when it comes to psychological or medical information, then it is high, it is more sensitive than the other type that I was talking about. So that's why, uh, and I think the publication point of view with regard to requirement of, of uh, ethical approval for this kind of research, it to discourage and to make sure that these are adhered to. What I mean is researchers that is dealing with say children psychology, they need to make sure that they have to uh, uh, see the importance of this before they start doing the research and before start publishing. I think that's why in that area they are more sensitive and they are more st stricter in in terms of uh, of ethical approval rather than say uh, more general social science, in, if you like. Uh, 
yeah of course i might be wrong here uh, uh, but that's the the general point of view of mine and with regard to letter from indonesia i think this regard to whether it, it, it's coming from indonesian government indonesians uh, uh, institutions i think that will go back to the publications or the journal publisher what kind of letter that will agree if they can show uh, if the letter shows a valid uh, uh, confirmations that the ethical uh, uh, approach has been maintained then i think the journal will accept it but if it doesn't say any anything related to a particular research that is being undertaken then there could be a question mark there I think that's my point of view. I could be wrong, but yeah. Thank you, Esri. Yeah, thank you very much for that input. Um, I agree with you. Like some journals, they don't even ask for the ethical approval, whether the way it's just a matter of the way you are presenting your findings. But also adding to Esri's point, then there are some high impacted journals. They even ask you to attach the ethical approval when you are submitting your uh, manuscript though so there are two sides actually if you are if you are if you are targeting a very high impacted journal uh, you will definitely need the ethical approval and in some journals uh, you don't need it's the matter of the way that you are presenting your findings uh, with in an anonymous way without disclosing the personal recognition information within your uh, findings. I think the answer, the the, the concise answer for Ainul's questions uh, would be that. Um, Ainul, are you happy with the answer? Um, any 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 explanation do you need? No, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, sorry, can thank I add you something? Thank raising that question. Yeah, please. Yeah, I think this is also a reminder for for our colleagues from Indonesia as well to make ethical approval as as a good practice that needs to be adopted in every research because that will 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 stop future problem in publications so make use to it yeah agree with you 100 percent Esri. i think i think it's a must before even uh, start collecting data uh, getting this approval uh, and uh, resolving these problems because uh, when you uh, uh, go to the publication process it can be a problem and are there um, we have seven minutes left and we need to give some time to uh, Mr. Ganesh to present the summary points. So before that, any anything that would you, you would like to uh, highlight uh, for point eight areas where most researchers struggle um, when you're writing your uh, methodology section? I think uh, I would like to add one point at this uh, for this point uh, for the for the point eight when I'm reviewing some articles one of the main uh, thing uh, I come across in methodology section is sometimes some researchers uh, struggle gives lots of irrelevant details within your methodology section the methodology section of your paper should be a thorough but to the point, I would say, don't provide any background information that doesn't directly help to read, uh, to understand why a particular method was chosen. So, so if you can make it to the point, uh, I think this is not only for the methodology, but also to the whole your manuscript, don't provide loads of irrelevant information, background information within your manuscript. To the point, what is the research problem? What is the area you have explored? Then the, what, the, what is the methodology you have used in terms of the data collection analysis? And then uh, any limitations if um, uh, for, the, uh, for your methodology. If you can uh, concisely explain this point, uh, bear in mind that you have limited word limit uh, for your manuscript. In some uh, journal manuscript, you have only 6,000, 7,000, and some manuscript you have even 9,000 and 10,000. So in that case, uh, always divide the word count uh, within the sections. Yes, Tushar. Uh, Dr. Chatu, I think even I struggled this one a uh, little earlier, but uh, now I, you know, <laughs> Um, I, I, I think I have uh, solved the issue, but I see many people. So what is the lack and the struggle here is uh, the way that they are justifying the methodology to their study, like, you know, 
some people they just present uh, this is my, uh, this is the sampling or this is the way of uh, you know selecting uh, the respondents and this is uh, the data collection tools and of course what i see is many people struggling to justify why these techniques uh, and uh, you know data collection tools analysis methods are more relevant to their study and how they justify uh, why this is really important to their study while having more other techniques other tools and all so that is uh, one uh, thing that i have noticed and i thought to you know include this into the discussion thank you thank you thank you tishari yeah, that's also really important because uh, it i think it's uh, uh, the, the 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 keeping this balance why you have selected uh, the particular uh, method comparing with the other method as the charities say uh, mentioned that is important and if you if you leave the whole methodology section explaining the the justification that is that will, that will be a failure so you need to explain the justification and then explain the method itself and i, I think another point i would like to mention here you don't need to give a step by step guide to your methodology this is what i did first and then step 2 is like that you don't need to i think you don't need to mention this step by step i think we have only 3 minutes remaining 3 minutes um, thank you to shara for pointing this out and also um, without uh, another point i would like to highlight is um, not to give a step by step process because you need to keep in mind uh, that reader would have basic understanding what is the uh, methodological uh, methodologies that you use that you can simply explain the methodological procedure uh, that would be uh, fine. So we have final two minutes before uh, going uh, going to the main plenary. Uh, Ganesh, you do you would you like to um, maybe yes. share your screen? And maybe show I will the share summary point. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry, I cannot share my screen. Could you give right. permission for me to? Uh, could you please quickly mail it to me? Then, okay, uh, okay, Ganesh. okay. 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 I, oh, oh, we can ask the um, the the give the host um, host connection of, uh, to you, Ganesh. Shall I ask it? Uh, I will send it to you right now. Right. Email, yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah, sorry, I I don't use the title properly. Yeah, it it sent. Uh, you receive it? it let me quickly ask uh give the okay uh, host uh, okay status no, i can, I can share my screen can you okay great. Yeah, yeah. so this is the eight point uh, would you like to explain oh, yeah. uh the summary points uh if you can quickly present yeah, this is uh, why methodology is important. It's verified the credibility of our research finding and to explain how we approach and answer our research problem. And let others replicate our research. Uh, this is why our methodology is important. Uh, if you want to add something, Dr. Chato, please. Uh, uh, no, that's all right, uh, Ganesh. We can, if we can quickly so go with the slides. It's tend to be used uh, in past ten because yeah, the past uh, we use past tense for our methodology, and it's passive voice. It's better to be used so we can emphasize the method we use rather than the person. So, how to introduce method uh, we use? We start by introducing how we approach our research problem, uh, rather uh, whether it's qualitative or quantitative approach, and how we linking instruments or analytics techniques. The priority is to think based on the reader's perspective. What is the simplest way for our reader to understand our methodology? And by addressing the bigger picture of our research, it can, uh, and starting with our research approach and how we collect the data and discuss the nature of the data. And then sampling, why is, is it important? Uh, it's to give the validity of our result and tell to what extent our result is gener generalizable. Uh, however, some of the research not use the term sampling, but they explain how we, we select the respondent. I think we, are, we will okay. be directed to the main room. Uh, Ganesh, okay. please present this to the play, main room, uh, plenary. Is it all right? Okay, okay, okay. okay. Yes, fine. 